Okay, so we have another lower limb trauma viva, and we've got Bigad uh, as the candidate today. Hi, Bigad, are you ready? I will lead you. Yes, okay. So you've got this 28-year-old male who's come to the A&E department following a road traffic accident. Um, these are his images. Uh, have a look at them and uh, tell me how you would manage. This is um, plain radiographs, anteroposterior and lateral views of a skeletal material individual showing the knee joint, um, and it seems to be sublux from both views. I'm worried that this is a knee dislocation that has spontaneously partially reduced. I would like to assess the patient according to the ATLS guidelines, um, and I would, I would like to assess the neurovascular status of the limb, um, feel the pulse, and assess the um, uh, common perineal nerve sensation and motor power. Okay, so he, uh, you think that there is some uh, pulse, maybe a bit weaker than the other side. You're not entirely sure. Uh, ATLS guidelines have been uh, implemented and there's no other obvious injury at the time being. Okay, uh, I would also assess the skin integrity, assuming that it's a closed injury. This is a posterior dislocation. I'm worried about vascular injury since the pulse is weak. Um, I'm aware that uh, with anterior dislocations, uh, it's more likely to be an intimal tear. However, with posterior dislocation, it could be a complete injury of the artery. Um, in our, um, I'm aware that the classic teaching is assessment of the ankle brachial pressure index. However, since the pulse is weak, uh, I will first attempt reduction of the knee to an anatomical position, get it in a better position, and apply um, uh, a knee immobilizer or a high above knee uh, back slab. Uh, I will then arrange CT angiogram uh, for the knee and the lower limb to assess for the vascular integrity. Okay, and uh, you've done that and uh, the pulse has improved following your reduction and the uh, CT angiogram did not show any evidence of uh, arterial uh, injury. Uh, what are you going to do next? So I'll admit the patient um, for observation of the neurovascular status. Um, uh, he's neurovascularly intact at the moment. I will admit him for observation of the circulation, uh, limb elevation, application of ice, uh, monitor the swelling uh, in the knee immobilizer or the uh, back slab, and then I will discharge the patient. This is our initial uh, uh, management for the knee dislocation. Um, worried about the injury of the um, uh, knee ligaments, the, the cruciates and the collaterals, I will schedule him for a follow-up in two weeks' time, um, uh, at point which we should consider ligamentous reconstruction uh, after doing an MRI and after examination of the knee. I'm aware that early ligament reconstruction within the first two or three weeks have proven to uh, improve the results, although earlier uh, opinions were that um, uh, reconstruction early can lead to arthrofibrosis. However, now there is a trend among knee surgeons to, to do early reconstruction of the ligaments. So we will get an MRI examining- Talk me to this. So, so you, you're gonna bring him back when then? After two weeks. Okay, and what are you gonna do when you bring him back? I will examine his knee. Um, um, for the ACL injury, I will do the Lachman test, and anterior drawer test, posterior drawer for the um, um, PCL. I would like to examine the posterolateral corner using the dial test and the posterolateral drawer. I will examine uh, the collateral ligaments using the stress uh, valgus and varus test at zero and 30 degrees of knee flexion. And depending on the results, I'll also do an MRI examination of the knee, uh, which will show us if there's any ligament in, uh, ligaments injured. Okay, let's say that you did this and your, both your anterior and posterior drawer uh, were positive, uh, highly suggestive of uh, ACL and PCL. You're also worried about the uh, posterior lateral corner and the LCL. Uh, what do you want to do next? So I'll discuss with the patient that he will need uh, surgical reconstruction of the ligament. Sorry, Begad, you've gone... Uh, Explain because... to him that this can be done as a single stage, two-stage procedure. Um, um, depending upon the capacity of the theaters, the competence of the surgeons, and availability of the uh, implants. Uh, if it's a two-stage, it will probably start by a PCL reconstruction coupled with a posterolateral corner, because if the posterolateral corner is done in isolation, it will probably fail, and vice versa. Um, so early PCL and posterolateral corner reconstruction followed by ACL reconstruction six weeks later. Or we can do it all in one sitting, 
if the time, the competence, and the uh, influence are available. Okay, uh, thank you. So you, you mentioned a neurovascular status. What particular uh, uh, point? Okay, time, time's over. Okay, thank you. Okay, we got, so what do you think overall? Um, it's, a, it's a big topic. I think I try to stick to what we do in clinical practice. I identified it's a knee dislocation and that most of the times you don't have to see it frankly dislocated. It could be a little bit subluxed. Um, um, I spoke about initial management and then definitive management. Uh, and, and this is what we do. Um, I addressed the neurovascular status in the right way, um, keeping in mind doing a CT angiogram, even though the pulse was felt and even after reduction, the pulse was regained, we still get the CT angiogram to check for any intimal tears that could happen. Um, I, would, I would have wanted to speak more about the technical aspects of what we do in terms of reconstruction, uh, but maybe I didn't have the enough time. Yeah, it's a, as you've mentioned, it's a, it's a long uh, uh, viva and there's plenty uh, to discuss. Now, um, I think this is the sort of classic teaching where you, you first reduce the knee uh, before you, you do any uh, other assessments. And then, uh, which you did mention, and then the classic teaching is the uh, ankle breaker pressure index. I mean, I don't know from my experience, I've I've never uh, actually done the ankle breaker pressure index, uh, although I've dealt with a few of these cases, and and it's always left up to now uh, imaging. Uh, is that the same in your hospital? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Mostly, mostly we do a CT angiogram yeah. straight away. And I think even in cases where we had pulse from the start. Uh, we still do it because as part of the trauma series, you do get uh, an angiogram, but you usually stop at the level of the hip. So in these cases, uh, when you do the um, CT uh, with the IV contrast, you just extend it to the lower limb, um, which is, is not a difficult thing. So yeah, maybe you can mention it in the exam because that's the classic teaching, but I would uh, strongly advocate that you uh, do a CT angiogram in, in all of these patients. Another sort of scenario where the viva might have gone into is, is that they mentioned that the, there is a tear uh, or that it is grossly unstable. And I think in this situation, then the um, classic uh, or the classic answer should be that you take him to theaters, um, you stabilize it with an external fixator and the vascular would do their uh, exploration, repair or uh, bypass. Um, now, Bigad, let, let's look at a, a, another uh, case. Uh, what do you think about this one? We're not going to do a full vibe on it, but what do you think about this image? Oh, um, in this clinical photograph, I can see what is called the dimple sign. And I would be worried that this is a post prolactal knee dislocation where the medial femoral condyle buttonholes through the capsule and the muscular structures making it difficult and almost uh, impossible to reduce in the A&E setting, and it needs an open reduction. It's sometimes even advisable to avoid um, uh, attempting closed reduction since it could add more neurovascular injury. Okay, so would, would you attempt a closed reduction in theaters at least before you go for open reduction? I could say so. Under general anesthetic uh, in theaters, before I do the open reduction, I can attempt uh, a closed reduction, just a single attempt, knowing that I'm, um, I, will I will turn the patient into an open reduction if I fail to do so uh, in a closed manner. Okay, so what exactly gets buttonholed here? So the medial femoral condyle, um, what you see is um, it's almost under the skin and it passes through the capsule and then through the um, uh, muscular structures or the uh, 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 between the semimembranosus and uh, the medial collateral ligament mm -hmm. okay and it's just sitting there beneath the skin that's what's causing the dimple sign okay yes i agree so that's uh, another so it's it's there's a wealth of of different things that could be discussed in the knee dislocation and it's one of the uh, very few orthopedic emergencies um, so one that you have to be well prepared for. Okay. Thank you, Bigad. Thank you.